Hello, welcome to a series of creature tutorials where I'm going to show you how we're going to build this really cool flame breathing dragon character and in creature and we're going to run some really cool normal map and ambient occlusion effects on his 2D image and bring him to Unreal Engine and have the final result of a fire breathing dragon in the Unreal Engine game engine <laughs> where you can actually move him around and make him spit a bunch of really awesome looking flames. So join me for a series of tutorials where we're going to do just that. Okay, so we're going to start off with authoring the dragon character in the creature animation tool. Now you can download the dragon sample from the creature animation documentation page and that sample is right over here in the dragon sample title. Uh, you, the link is over here, so feel free to go to the documentation page to grab the sample and play around with it. So once you've downloaded the sample and opened it up, here's what the dragon sample looks like. This is the input mesh. These are the different images on the dragon Im image atlas. Okay. If we go into the rigging mode, you can see the characters all set up. The different regions have been placed out correctly on screen, and if you look at the bones, here's how the bones structure looks like. Now, if you want to learn how to do rigging in Creature, please watch previous tutorials on our YouTube channel on how to run and rig and mesh the character. Okay, the focus of this tutorial is to go through some of the concepts of how the animation of the dragon was done in Creature. So now we're going to go into animate mode and we're going to take a look at what we're doing to achieve the various animations. Now, the first thing I'm going, to, I'm going to take a look at is the fire, the, the breathing, flame breathing animation. Right? There's no flames here because we're going to use the flames in Unreal Engine to actually achieve that effect. However, you can see there's some pretty cool things going on already for this character. Now, let's start with the tail. Okay, so how is the tail achieved? The tail is actually moving up and down, right? And you can see the end, the end uh, joints of the tail are actually waving about in a very nice, well, wavy fashion, if you want to call that. So let's see how it's achieved. Now, the first thing that's done is at the base of the tail, you notice it's called a ro uh, the motor type is called a rotate cycle motor. Okay, so this is a motor that will uh, that's going to basically rotate the the base joint between the angle of zero and negative ninety degrees. See, that's how it's done. So when you play it, see how this is moving up and down. So that's accomplished with a rotate cycle motor. That's the power of Creature's procedure motor system. Now, of course, you can keyframe it too in Creature if you want. But the purpose of this demo and this tutorial is to teach you how to use the procedure motor system of Creature to speed up and get some really realistic, high quality animations. Now, moving on to the rest of the tail, how's that wavy effect done? If I press Control M, I select the rest of the tail joints, right? and you notice that the motor type is now set to bend physics motor. Now this is a physics motor that's actually going to run some character physics effects, some sophisticated character physics effects on the rest of the tail. Okay, And what it does is it runs a sort of a bendy, springy-like physics simulation model on a bunch of joints. Okay, And I have set a bunch of physical parameters on the tail itself. These are the material parameters, material properties, if you want to call that. And they determine how stiff, loose, or damped this entire joint section is. So you, you notice I've tweaked various values. Damping set to 12, the stiffness, this is really the bending stiffness, how bendable it is, is set to 30, and the stretch stiffness is about like 150. You can play around with these values to get different effects. But the end result is that the base bone was set to a rotate cycle and it actually drives the physics on the rest of the bones over here. So if I play it, that is the effect you get. That's pretty cool. And so in general, what you can do, a general tip for you is to always have a rotate cycle motor for a base joint and then have a bunch of bend physics, a bend physics to drive the rest of the joints. And then you get, you get some really, really cool natural looking secondary motion effects from this kind of setup. Okay. Now let's Let's go to the other portions of, uh, of this character. 
So let's take a look at the wing. The wing is compressing. It's, it's expanding and compressing, right? It's stretching its wings out. How's that done? That's a really simple one. So if you take a click on any of these, these guys, you notice they're all rotate cycle motors, right? So it's just a bunch of rotate cycle motors. They are rotating at different phases and different angles to result in this kind of contraction and expansion of the wing effect. It's super simple. Just a bunch of rotate cycle motors with different angle limits and phases set to them to achieve this effect, okay? So nothing really fancy here, but it gives some really, really nice results, right? Now, let's take a look at the legs, right? So legs are actually locked in. We have IK on the legs. They're locked in because we, we want them to fix, be fixed to the ground, right? So we have a smooth IK motor locked in for the legs, and that actually plants it on the ground, okay? And, and then the other thing you want to care about is probably this guy over here. So this, you notice the dragon's actually moving, sort of moving up and down in a breathing fashion. That's accomplished with a move bounce motor. This is a motor that actually oscillates the bone vertically and horizontally, however you want. In this case, it's not oscillating horizontally because the amplitude x or the amp x is set to zero, but it is oscillating vertically because I have a value on amp y. Okay, so you set that up, and it basically has this subtle up and down motion. Okay, and and then how is this this stuff done? Well, the neck you can you notice the neck is actually moving, not just oscillating. It's sort of almost targeting some kind of circular arc to make it have this forward lunging motion. And how's that one done? So this motion is done with essentially a smooth IK rotate motor. It's actually an IK, it's an IK motor, but it targets an, an ellipsoid. You can tweak this ellipsoid. In this case, this ellipsoid has been, has been tweaked to look like this. It's, it's more vertically stretched out than it is horizontally, okay? And when, when, you, when you have that and you run it, you, that's what you get. This is an IK motor that's targeting an animated ellipsoid. It's called a smooth IK rotate motor. And you can change the, their values. You can scale these different ellipsoids based on the properties on the right. You can make it, you can scale it left, right, top, uh, bottom. You can change the height. You can change the speed and all that. So it's a very powerful thing. And so that, with that, with the smooth IK rotate motor, you get this lunging motion, okay? Now, so we're wondering, like, do we actually do any keyframing? And we do, actually. We do a lot, actually do keyframing. And the keyframing comes in, the manual animation process comes in for the, the mouth, actually. So if you look at the, the jaws of the character, we actually have two keyframes, one at frame 0 and one at frame 22. Okay, so that is actually keyframed. And so this is a great example of how we're combining manual keyframe animation with the power of creature's procedural motor system to get some really, really nice looking results. Okay, so that's how the fire animation of the dragon is, the flame breathing animation of the dragon is accomplished. All right, okay, so let's move on to the walking animation. That's the next one that you probably care about, and the rest are really just a repetition of the same thing. So here is the walk cycle of the dragon. Now, the tail is done with the same trick. It's basically the bend physics going about. The wings are also actually just, now this time round, let me see what we've done here. We actually just have a bunch of rotate cycle motors. Yeah, so we've just toned down the effect of the rotate cycle motor to give that wobbly effect. So nothing new here. What you probably care about is how the legs are done, correct? So the legs, if you'll take a look at it, the legs are accomplished with the smooth IK rotate motor. The same trick we did for the front, the lunging effect we applying on the legs, and this gives us sort of an automated walk cycle, which is kind of cool, except I've actually sculpted the ellipsoid to be completely flat at the bottom. And you notice on the right for the properties when the scale bottom set to zero, right? So this basically flattens the, com the bottom of the ellipsoid and that, to simulate sort of a ground, right? So it basically targets this arc over here, okay? And that's what you get. Now, if we go to the other limb, you notice that I haven't actually flattened that because it was it's the back limb, so I wanted more of like more of a circular effect. So you can play around with it to see what you're getting. But crucially, there there are two limbs going on here, right? There's actually two limbs. If you take a look, there's the back limb and the front limb. And what's the main difference other than the arc? Well, the main difference is that the phase of the front 
limb is zero, or the, the front layer is zero, okay? Now, if we go to the back limb, the phase is set to one. Now, what is that? The phase is basically how the animation starts, or rather how the rotate, smooth IK rotate motor starts. In which point of the arc does it start? Now, as you know, the when, you, when you're walking, one leg is forwards and one leg is backwards, right? This means that we want the animation to start at different points on the arc. And that's why we have it out of phase, or out of sync, to make it a realistic walk cycle. Okay, and so the same trick is applied to the front. We have two smooth IK rotate motors to, for the, both the front, the, the, the front layer limbs and the back layer limbs, but the phase is crucially set differently. So the phase for the back, the back layer one is zero, and the phase for the front layer one is one. Okay, but they're both smooth IK rotate motors, and I've basically sliced off or smashed out the bottom of the sphere to be a flat, flat sphere. Okay, a flat plane. All right, so that is how the walk cycle is done. It's actually really simple. It's just a combination, combination of various procedural motors, and crucially, we're using the smooth IK rotate motor to help us automate the walk cycle motion. And so this animation was done really, really, really fast, probably in less than like 10 minutes. Okay, so once you're done with that, once you're done with that, what we do is we export the animation in Creature. So we go to Export Animation, click on Game Engines, okay? And then Export, and you can just pick Normal Export and pick a folder. And once you pick that folder and you saved in it, it's gonna export out for you two files, the JSON file of the Dragon that contains all the animation data, and it will also export out the PNG file or the Atlas image, which you're going to use for import. But in this in this case, we're going to actually go to a second step, which is we're going to run Sprite Bump and run a bunch of normal maps and ambient occlusion effects on that on that input Atlas to make the dragon even more realistic and look almost like 3D in Unreal Engine. So let's go on to the second part of this series.